Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a pretty complicated technique here and it's going to be a circling approach. So uh, today we have ourselves uh, flying in our handy dandy little Cessna 172, this is the G1000 version. I usually fly the one with the steam gauges as they say, but hey, I figured to make things a little difficult for myself because, you know, why not? So today we've got an interesting situation where uh, it's a uh, pretty darn bad visibility here. This is uh, pretty typical for the weather recently, apparently there's a hurricane coming through, uh, who knew? So what we're going to do is we're going to be flying the RNAV approach for runway 2. However, the weather, if you take a look real quickly, I'll go ahead and flip this around so you can see it, is actually coming from the wrong direction for that particular approach. So the uh, runway two, of course, you'd want the wind to be coming basically uh, right out of the north. In this case, we're getting this really nasty crosswind that's kind of cut across everything, which is preventing us from using that approach. Instead, we're going to have to use the instrument approach to get us close to the ground. And then what we're going to have to do is we're actually going to circle the airport until we're able to do a regular landing to it. Now, you're probably sitting there going, OK, I didn't know that was a thing you could do. And believe it or not, it is. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the chart real fast. So uh, real quickly, you know, just taking a look, we're using the RNAV GPS2, or we're coming via thumb here you can see i'm already at the correct altitude i'm already on my way to thumb as you can see over there on the right so we're going to go to we got which is going to be our initial fix uh, this is a pretty straightforward one and then we're going to drop down to 2200 feet and basically we're going to approach lomas which is going to be our final approach fix at 22 and then we're going to go down to 680 feet now this is where it's going to get interesting if you take a look down here you're going to see a thing that says circling Circling simply says what altitude do we have to use in order to stay near the airport for a circling approach. So this particular one says 580 feet is our minimum. So what does that mean for us? It means we're going to use this just as a regular RNAV approach, even though it's coming from the wrong direction. When we get down to this position here, instead of going all the way down to our regular minimums, which is 460 feet, we're only going to go down to 580 feet. Now you're probably sitting there going, oh, that's kind of neat. So um, how close to the airport do we need to see or be able to stay? Now this is where it's going to get a little interesting. I was actually doing a little research, and it depends on the type of aircraft you're using. So first of all, we have a circling MDA. Our circling MDA here is going to be 580 feet. And we also know that we are category A aircraft. How do we know? Um, we're a propeller jockey, and we're pretty darn slow. So we're definitely with this. So we need to stay within 1.3 nautical miles of our entire approach. Now keep in mind, if you're an airliner doing this, uh, you could be up here in the category C and D range, which would give you a 3.6 nautical mile, which simply says little airplanes like us, this is a great way to get around a problem. Now, for a big airplane, obviously, this is a super dangerous approach because you're going to only be 600 feet off the ground as you do your actual approach. So now that we have a pretty good idea of what the approach is going to be, it's just a matter of uh, flying the approach directly. So we'll go pop back over to the simulator real quick. I'm going to come down here. I'm actually going to go confirm real quickly that our approach is set right. So I'm going to select my approach. We're just going to go down here and we'll come over to this one. Ah, it doesn't let us put the minimums in. Oh, that's no fun because again, we're not a radar minimum airplane, so we can't do any of that. So we basically fly the approach uh, as we uh, do a regular approach here. I'll go ahead and close this menu. We don't need it. We're going to hit thumb, and what I will do is I'll skip time a little bit to where we get just over to the uh, final approach fix. All right, we're taking our turn onto our final. So now we're going to go get this thing all set up. We're going to drop down to 2200 feet. We're going to go over to the vertical speed button, and we're going to come down at about 500 feet per minute. 500 feet per minute, basically take your speed, divide by two, and try to keep it uh, relatively as close as you can. Uh, the more consistently you can do that part, the uh, safer your descent here is going to be. So in this case, uh, like we saw a little bit earlier, we'll go ahead and I'll pop open that chart real fast so you can take a quick look at it again. You can see uh, we're just crossed the uh, we got position, and we're making our way down to our final approach fix at Lomas at 2200 feet. When we get to here, we need to consider downward until we get to Dan's. At Dan's, we need to be about 600. 80 feet. Once we cross Dan's, we can then dip all the way down to our circling altitude until we can make visual contact with the runway. Once we get down to that point where we can have visual contact, we can then pop over here and we just have to keep ourselves within 1.3 nautical miles during the entire approach. Obviously, if you have sophisticated GPSs, uh, this is really, really easy to do. If you're trying to do this the old-fashioned way, well, it gets a little involved and it gets a little difficult pretty quick. All right, so uh, we're down to 2,200 feet. Remember, a Lomas is our absolute limit there. We can't go any lower than this. We got there a little earlier. Again, it was a little power reduction, so we're going to go ahead and increase that. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the runway and stay within 1.3 nautical miles of it. So basically, if you want to think about it another way, we're going to do an extremely teeny tiny, super tight traffic pattern to try to put this thing on the ground. Now, to make things more complicated in the real world, if we were doing this in reverse, you have a right traffic pattern. But in this case, we're just going to use a, basically stay with the runway the whole way down. So we're just going to confirm that everything looks okay, 2,200 feet, and we're just going to go ahead and check our plate one more time. Again, we don't want to make any mistakes here. So we're going to go down to, uh, let's see, Lomas is at 22, Dan's is going to be 680. So we'll go ahead and I'll load in 700 feet directly into our little arming thing here. 
700, whoa, not negative 700 feet. That would be an interesting experience underground. Now, one of the things that makes this super easy is I can actually see the flashing lights over there way out in the distance. The real world, um, yeah, good luck with that. On the flip side too, because we have the synthetic vision on this aircraft, it does make this a little bit easier. But again, if you're in this situation and the weather is this dangerous, uh, you're gonna have to do pretty much anything you can within the certification of that aircraft in order to get yourself safely down to the ground. So what we'll do now is uh, we'll go ahead and speed up just a teeny tiny bit here, uh, take advantage of the time acceleration built into Flight Sim. You gotta love that. Once we hit Lomas, we'll go ahead and get our 100 feet per minute coming down again. It's gonna be, actually not 100, sorry, 500 feet per minute descent. And we're basically gonna make our way all the way down to that minimum altitude of about 680 feet and we're basically going to circle that once we get to the end of our approach and see if we can find the runway in this case i don't think it's going to be too too difficult to spot the runway so that's kind of good news for us all right we're gonna get ready on the vertical speed button remember as you start to descend you're gonna to have to back out your throttle a little bit flying these by hand by the way are super duper fun and there we have it vertical speed down 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 we'll go down 500 feet per minute pull back the throttle a little bit we only need to knock like 100 rpm off usually to keep your speed at about 100. so now what we're going to do is we're going to descend down to uh, 700 feet remember our minimum we can go down to is 680 but as long as we maintain that altitude and we can find the runway and make visual contact with it we can basically fly a modified traffic pattern until we get down on the ground now if you want to imagine in the real world the traffic pattern altitude for this is about 1030 feet so we're going to almost be half traffic pattern in order to be able to safely get this plane down. Now, one of the things I really love about this approach, if you look really carefully, is the fact the approach does not point you at the end of the runway. It actually points you at an offset angle to the runway. So what we're going to do now is, like I said, as soon as we can see this runway, we're good to begin our circling process. But remember, we have to stay within 1.3 nautical miles, which is super duper 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 close. We basically can't cross this river in order to uh, stay within our particular position. But we can drop all the way down to that altitude pretty safely. All right, I'm going to back the throttle out a little bit. We're getting a little on the fast side. Don't forget, you're still responsible for landing the plane. So things like uh, your landing gear, things like your flaps, you're going to want to make sure you put those out at the appropriate time so that you can safely, like I said, put this thing down. I can see the runway very clearly at this point, and uh, usually what you would do is you'd make the call to kind of let them know runway's in sight, and uh, they would clear you for the circle. But in this particular case, uh, we're just going to keep on coming down. <laughs> like I said, we're looking for that minimum altitude when we cross that last position to Dan's right around that 700 feet. Can look like i said we're super lucky here uh the visibility is a little too good so let's make it a little worse why not right let's make it 800 feet oh it doesn't let me do 800 feet okay fine we'll do 500 feet jerk <laughs> all right looks pretty good nice and again the real world the uh visibility would probably be uh, well we can do that too can't we let's go over here let's make it a little bit more exciting because right now it's just ah it's just kind of lame kind of lame Okay, we've got the weather. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. I don't want to delete that cloud layer. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. All right, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Take our little wind layer. Looks pretty good. Ugh, that's pretty nasty. And everything is fine the way it is. Good. All right, let's put this thing down on the ground. So I'm looking out the window right now. The aircraft is uh, ugh, trying to go missed approach on me. So I'm actually going to take the controls back. We're going to go over to manual. We're going to continue descending until we get to about 680. But like I said, I can see the runway already. So it's uh, pretty safe to do our little approach. Now, what we're going to do is it's not really circling, except for the fact that we need to stay very close to the runway. So we're going to drop all the way down to that 700 feet. We're basically going to hug that runway the whole way down. Normally, when we do the traffic pattern, we're up over here. But for this particular case, uh, we just cannot get away with that today. There's my warning. And like I said, we're just going to do kind of like an abbreviated approach. As long as you can stay within that distance of that runway, you're always going to be fine, which is why, like I said, these are pretty tricky approaches. Now, of course, in the real world, you're probably sitting here going, why don't they just use that crosswind runway if the wind is so bad? Uh, it's kind of a small runway, and uh, it probably would have been raining and all that other nastiness, too, as we're coming here. So there's 700 feet. That's our absolute minimum. We can't dip under that. Um, because like I said, this would be what you would be holding at trying to find that runway after completing your approach here. But in this case, uh, we found the runway without too much difficulty, so I'm not stressing out about it at all. Give myself a couple extra RPM here. This is going to be one heck of a, a tight little approach. Obviously, you can see by the turbulence, this is going to be a bit of a rough landing. But again, in the real world, you do what you have to do. Now, one of the cool things is it's not unusual for the big airports to actually give you an instrument approach that is not in line where they need to be and actually spin you around to basically get almost like a perpendicular approach. That's a great, great, great technique to kind of save you the trouble of you know, going 35 miles out and then having to whip yourself around. 
All right, we're gonna have to start backing that throttle out. Right, now we're ready. We've probably been cleared to land. Go ahead and pull my flaps all the way down here. We're gonna get ourselves going nice and slow. And all we have to do is safely put this thing on the ground at this point. Now you understand why they call it the circling. Again, this is a perfectly normal procedure. It's actually at some airports, it's a little on the common side, depending on how variable the weather is. But you can see in something like a Cessna like this, we can just come right on down. We're basically doing a dead engine approach here. Looks pretty good, looks pretty good. We're gonna try to not pass 30 degrees there. Yeah, we got basically a dead engine. I'm just gonna, oh, here it is. And we just line ourselves up for the normal approach. Remember now that the wind is actually coming from my right. So as I put this thing down on the ground, I'm gonna have to be really, really careful. You can see I got all my power all saved up for this. All right. There's a big old number two zero. You can see that really nasty looking windsock. Hold this over the ground just a little bit. Nose up. Picked up a little bit of extra speed and we are down. Nice. Keep flying the airplane after touching the ground. All right, hopefully this video is helpful as far as making you see what this kind of approach can look like. It's, like I said, it's a neat way to use an instrument approach to safely find the airport more so than to, you know, put the plane on the ground. You basically do all that stuff visually. Everything else is done, as you can see, just like you did now. Enjoy.